which will be held by LUC, and it's about online elections at universities and how to prevent them. LUC is a student himself at the University of Göttingen, and I'll give the floor to him right now. Have fun. So, thank you for the introduction and thank you to all those who are interested and in listening today. How to prevent online elections and why you should was an alternative title for this talk. But let's get started with the topic. It's I'm not going to go into too many details, also not about certain products. I am not a legal nor a political expert. I'm just a student of computer science. So thank you, first of all, to the speaker of the resolution for electronic elections of the KIF 46.0 and many other individuals who have helped me create this presentation. So, a few words about myself. I study in Göttingen and I'm also active in the Student Council. And we've been seeing the first signs of online elections being introduced before the pandemic started. And also you can contact me via my email address, which I've posted and I've also uploaded the um, slides. Let's start with articles in the German Constitution. And it says that all state authority is derived from the people. It shall be exercised by the people through elections and other votes and through specific legislative, executive and judicial bodies. And this also means that if we have doubts that the election is running as it should, we have the right to make sure that it is and investigate. And this is what my talk will be about. Because if the integrity of elections is lost, the uh, whole democracy is threatened. Let's start with a relevant XKCD. I'll give you a minute to have a look at it. And after that, I'll continue with my presentation. So, essentially, what this comic is referencing is that software isn't trusted by software developers themselves oftentimes, and they oftentimes express doubts about it themselves. So, let's get into the history of online election at universities. Wikipedia says that the first online election was conducted in 2000 at the University of Osnabrück. It was mandated by the federal government, actually, because they wanted to have a trial on 
uh, whether online elections could be a viable option for federal elections in Germany. Other universities also started um, using online election, but only in recent years. Only the University of Jena is a bit of an earlier example with 2011. Now let's look at the electoral principles, which include that members of the German Bundestag shall be elected in general, direct, free, equal and secret elections. What's, what does that mean? Secret should be relatively obvious. Only the person voting should know their vote and the votes are cast in closed ballots. And um, also there's a voting booth that is not to be seen from the outside and independent means Free means that it's free of pressure. So there shouldn't be electoral advertisements in the voting booth. General means that everyone has a right to vote actively and passively, independently of their income, of their origin, as long as they are citizens, all citizens have the vote to write generally. And equal means that all ballots are equal, but that also concerns passive election rights, so that means that everyone who is eligible to be voted is equal as well. And then there is the publicity, which is not in the constitution, but was later introduced by the government which means that um, the voting process must be traceable and transparent, basically. This means that for me, if I vote or am voted, I can always get insight into the process and keep track of how many people are voting and that everything is going according to you the regulations and I can also anyone is able to help count the votes and can can sign up as an election helper now let's continue with the advantages of and disadvantages of online voting I think it's obvious that during a pandemic, organizing a vote is incredibly difficult. So online voting has advantages there. So I totally get why you would want online voting in a pandemic. Also, the participation will increase, which I will come back to later, then environmental protection, because you save paper. So this, this is where online votes should have an advantage. Then temporal, like you, you save time. Not just the ones who are voting, but also the ones who are organizing the vote save a lot of time. Because voting um, booths are often staffed by volunteers that have to invest a lot of time. And even if you do mail vote voting, the envelopes have to be opened. And that is a point in favor of online voting. And then there's also cost savings, which I will also come back to later. Of course, you can vote from anywhere. And a factor that is often forgotten 
entscheide, dass ich mich doch umentscheiden möchte. If I want to change my mind, that isn't really easy um, to do in a paper bullet because crossing out has to be done a specific way. And it's sometimes not easy to interpret whether when a person changed their mind, they actually crossed out their vote or if the vote is invalid. Digital democracy, I put that in brackets. It's an argument often used by advocates of online voting, but I don't really see it as an advantage because if you wanted direct democracy, you could change the electoral process as a whole and not just make it every four years, but maybe every year or even more frequently. Accessibility is a very important argument in favor of online voting. It's easy to imagine that people with disabilities have advantages with online voting. But Listenwahlen haben, sie dürfen bis zu drei Leute ankreuzen und haben dann vier Leute angekreuzt. Das because um, people with disabilities are also sometimes disadvantaged in paper ballots. Then uh, the election period, which may be extended, and prestige. Because if this liberal, neoliberal blockchain thought that you would want to have your elections online, let's come to the disadvantages. The main disadvantage is security. No computer system is secure, therefore no online voting system can be secure. Wahlsystem auch ganz ohne Computerbeteiligung. Das ist eben bei online noch mal sehr viel schlimmer. Of course, paper Und votes are also insecure, also but it gets so much worse with online voting. Oder von ihren eigenen Smartphones. Because the responsibility in the end goes to the end users and end devices used to vote. That can't be a good thing because it adds so many attack vectors all at once. DDoS, for example, could hinder people from voting or sniffing would be an option even if the software is encrypted there is still the theoretical risk that network traffic could be infiltrated and sniffed in a way that you could find out who voted when and you could use those results to get further insights. Cross-scripting is also an option. For example, if QR codes are involved for voting for certain peoples, of course, logins could be reset in the data center or Trojans could be used to find out who is behind credentials. And also very important, wholesale fraud. The whole election process could be manipulated. In offline elections, especially in paper ballots, you have less possibilities of fraud. Of course, you can corrupt people, you can threaten people, extort people, but still it's not possible in the same way as in online elections. And also online voting attacks are less traceable in the end. Then we have phishing. 
should be obvious why that would be a risk. And also, well, if you don't trust the organizers of the vote, if um, the organizers of the vote are acting malicious, it would also become possible to find out who voted. So now let's come back to publicity and um, elections being public. Online voting systems are black box, essentially. It sounds easy, but it, it would be easier to have online votes if the concept of secrecy wasn't required. And there are a few problems that go along with that. Paper ballots, with paper ballots you have, each person has one vote, and that makes it more traceable. And also, election booths have usually more than one person. And even if there is doubt, I can recount the election. There are many, several mechanisms that try to safeguard the election. And with online votes, sometimes they are they are not as effective. For example, they say, "Hey, an IP address must not be." It must not be recorded because that might lead to some uh, to, to, to the ability to figure out who was that. But there is no way to recount, and the whole system is not transparent for uh, new people. Uh, then usually there are certificates, and the question is: Is everything configured clearly? And in the end, some, only a specialist can understand it. And why can't configure that there needs to be an IT security specialist in every vote collection? So, if a manipulation is hard to detect, if, it's, if there might be a manipulation possible, then there is a loss of trust into the election itself, and that's an important political argument. It's very useful for to use online elections for uh, um, corrupt systems because it's so easy to manipulate. And at that point, uh, we have the lead back to the universities. Um, I think universities can open doors to the to this society and it's very critical if universities do something that can be uh, preferred by autocratic regimes then the usability might be more complicated um, with the vote machine voting machines in uh, in in, in, in Northern Europe had to be repeated because some people did not click on OK. With our votes, uh, with our election, you there was a timeout. And with the test election with data from last year, you can see, um, perhaps you can't see it, it's a long list and it's very hard to view. Several there are several ballots, one after the other, that are only separated by this these white borders, and you need to scroll down to the end, because in the end you have to select to go forward. In the end, everybody scrolled through everything once, or they press the end button, but it's not it's not easy to see what happens. Then there are another disadvantages. It's it's hard to do an error correction in the president's 
election there, usually people will there and in our English, uh, the English translation said Testwahl in the header, but perhaps somebody sees that and says it's just a test election and they don't know whether that's the real election or not. So even with proper normal elections, there might be errors, but um, yeah, it's, with online election, it's, it's, it's possible that there are local election parties and um, you might get a post on social media and get and are influenced to vote for a specific group. So, the most important or uh, necessary requirement is trust, and trust is, uh, so, uh, we don't want to trust a person, and we can't trust with a, on an online election. Here are the, uh, the, the, the uh, opposition, um, something that's required here. The uh, general selection uh, letter, uh, voting by letter and online might be better. Um, the online election, older persons might have problems. The equality, I had an issue with the online election. Um, because the lists are shown very differently. With a paper vote, of course, there are also lists on the top and the bottom, but you can see them all in one view. And in this case, it's not possible. Um, you can't have, uh, have an overview who can be elected. That was improved for this, the real election, but it was still quite complicated. And the secret election is complicated because there are so many attack surfaces. So again, the online election, it's a remote election, not a presence. Uh, in presence is more connected with a voting by letter, but it's uh, it's it's a bit cheaper than a letter voting by letter rather than with a paper ballot. Shortly for the uh, law system, the uh, there was the requirement to the publicity and the. Polias, the online election creator, says uh, that voting are not uh, voting machines are not allowed, but uh, the all online elections are used run on computers because you run it on your own computers and servers somewhere in a, in a server center are required to run the election. So, apart from this effect that it's um, done over a distance, everything is. Means that it's still election computers, and that the the the, the Turingian, um, well, the Thuringian court had a decision in 2013, but it wasn't sufficiently it wasn't sufficient for online voting. But prosecution said that um, they basically said that lay men and women would be able to count the election. And we'll see what the courts will decide in the end. So now let's advance a little bit quicker. Publicity um, is only for political um, elections. That is what the courts said, but I don't view it that way because I see university elections 
equally as democratically important than political large elections. Well, let's compare online and offline voting. Offline voting is closed source. There is now it's about uh, the online voting systems used in university and this is a the, we have a monopoly situation there because poly as is the um, only company offering this online voting system it uses a blockchain a local blockchain that is and of course they're saying that the election catalog and the ballot box are independent but they don't give any proof i basically have to trust them and i don't want to do that the contract elapsed in march 2021 and this is about the cost you have to use a certified software it costs about 20,000 Euro per electing person. So if you take into account that many people aren't even voting in universities, this doesn't really make sense, but because even if you paid people at the um, at, at the polling stations, it would still be less than the cost of an online election. I'll skip that. There were a few issues with the university online election. So there was one possibility to vote locally in person and there was a problem with the verification the the counting took the count took too long it was announced that it would be 10 minutes but in fact it was hours it took hours and hours and Für eine einzelne Liste steht, the results were also a bit confusing because some of the electees were only had like two or three or one vote and of course there's no possibility to calculate um, who could have been that then there were some erase conditions in javascript Concluding, there's no prestige. Let's get back to the participation, which actually increased. But during the seven days where you could um, vote, 24 hours a day, um, participation increased after reminders were sent, but also the number of invalid votes increased. And if you watch this trend for a longer time, for an institution that has been voting online for a long time, you can see that it, this trend only persists as long as the online voting system is new. Now I'll get to the end because I don't have much time left. I'm really sorry for that. Concluding, I don't want online voting at universities. It might be an option long term, but 
not sure, short term. So thank you very much for your attention. And my opinion is obvious here. No, thank you. Now we can't hear Jinx. Now we can. Um, she's reminding you about the pad where you can ask questions. So we already have one question. Do you think there's a chance to prevent the law from declaring a system as secure? Well, there is a catalog with a very superficial rating and uh, superficial conditions like, for example, can, a condition would be that one person can't vote multiple times. So I think the uh, German Federal Office for Security in Information Systems would be the best organization to start with because it will be difficult to get our parliament to get into this. And I think you sh um, I think that the government will be cautious about declaring certain systems as secure. Another question. Which um, approach do you find promising for preventing online elections? I think being on time is critical if you want to pr um, prevent this from happening. We should have been there and made contact earlier, for example, in Jena, where they've been having online voting systems since 2011. Also, I think presentations, online presentations like this one are very important. And also baby steps, ask for a proper process, ask for um, for a postponing of the system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Sorry, technology is a bit against me <laughs> this evening. There's another question incoming. And people are also typing still. The question was posted in English. Why do you think universities can't just enforce for election systems to be open source or even have open source software and components because um, of the principle public money, public code? <laughs> I'll respond in German. So I would turn this around and say it's not good software just because it's open source. And even if the software was open source, it would be questionable still. So I'd say it's similar than Zoom and other issues. Just if you have a system, it will be used. People will resort to the most available op option. So certification will also be expensive. Yeah. What can student councils do? once online voting is introduced. What we did is we were promised test elections in 2019. That never happened. And that is when we as the Student Council decidedly spoke out against online elections. Because of the pandemic, we 
were put under a lot of pressure by different sides and it's even more special in Göttingen because in Göttingen the elections are organized by the a, an academic committee and it really depends on whether the student body or the university as such conducts the elections. And I'm never sure whether our arguments reach people or what people are motivated by, but I think it's never wrong to just talk about it and get a discussion started. There's, we're at the end of our question rope. So are you telling me to continue presenting? Well, yeah. Time is also getting to an end, which is sad because um, this is such a diverse topic where a, not, a lot still needs to be discussed. So there's a lot of thank you messages coming into the pad. One, one last thing. I posted our complaint online, which you can find at the end of the announcement as a PDF. So if you want to get inspired, you can have a look at it. Perfect. That would have been my last question, whether you've anything, uh, any last words to add. So if you want, you could also show a few more slides. All right. I have a five-step plan for a more detailed response, but there's always um, the possibility to speak with people and also to include marginalized groups and minorities, which is very important. And there are a few organizations already that are talking about this topic and also getting legal, legal advice is very important and getting the student body uh, to engage with the topic and also to veto such systems. And also there's the option of suing or filing official complaints, but I can't really say anything about that because I'm not a legal professional. Yeah, that's really complex, a complex legal issue because, um, yeah, you have to know which paragraphs and which articles of the Constitution are applicable and which laws and which pandemic extra conditions are applicable. Yeah, and we already have concrete online elections coming up, but, and this is also legitimizing the online voting process. This is a very good final conclusion. Thank you for being here.